and we're recording. So in this video I'd like to introduce the build system that we will be using for this project. It's called Gradle, it's from 2009, so getting a little bit more recent, and it also has a really good idea in it. Now in this case the really good idea was that they looked at the build config of all of those Maven projects, all of that XML, and they realised, well hang on, what we're doing when we tell the build system how to build our code, telling a program, a computer, how to do something, that's programming. Why don't we, rather than writing our build config as a whole heap of XML, why don't we use a programming language for this? Why don't we have a domain specific language uh, for doing this? And so Gradle is built upon a programming language called Groovy. And Groovy is a programming language that is kind of particularly well suited to creating little languages, what they call domain specific languages, short notations that are quite easy to read, quite expressive uh, for describing a particular purpose. And in this case, that purpose is telling Gradle how to build your code. Now, Gradle isn't specifically for Java projects, and it actually works a little bit like Make did in that it lets you define the tasks and what they depend upon. Um, but it also lets you define plugins. Uh, so you can, if you like, have the build config is using a library that's about build configs um, in order to teach it, uh, all right, this is a Java project to so use the Java plugin, aha! The Java plugin knows that Maven-like source structure, source main Java, source test Java, and it knows the different phases that you want to do about compiling your source code and compiling your tests and resolving dependencies and, and running your tests, for instance. So this is what we do. Uh, we use a Java plugin uh, to make Gradle expect a Maven-like structure. And Gradle also supports fetching libraries from the web and it supports fetching Maven libraries from the web. Uh, so we're not going to have to, uh, you know, all those people who've published Maven uh, libraries to repositories, all of those hundreds of thousands of Java libraries that are out there published as Maven repositories are usable to Gradle projects. Now at this stage, let me hop out of the presentation and let me bring up a terminal and let's try creating a really, really trivial Gradle project from scratch. So let's create a directory called Gradle Proj. And let's go into Gradle Proj. And at the moment, this is empty. Um, but if you recall, we want to have that Maven-like structure. So we would like there to be a source directory with within it a main directory with within it a Java directory. And we would like there to be a source directory with within it a test directory within it with and a java directory so that's going to be you know the the java of our actual program is in source main java the java of our tests is in source test java and now i'm going to need a, a build.gradle so let's create build.gradle this is the uh the name of the, the definition file for gradle and i'm going to say that I would like to apply the um, the plugin uh, for Java, and let's discover whether I've made any sin silly typos because sometimes I go domestically blind uh, when I'm doing live de live recorded demos. So let's just try going Gradle build on my empty project, and it's configuring and okay, okay, and okay. I have actually. Uh, done a silly typo in there, foolish of me, and um, I'm going to crib one I went, uh, one I did earlier. And yes, that is my silly mistake. I have not put Java in quotes. There we go. So apply plugin, and of course the next thing I want is the name of it. But this is a programming language that is a string. So I've said apply the plugin, and the plugin is called Java. Uh, it should be in quotes, and single quotes will do in this case. All right, let's try that Gradle build again. Now it's going to read our build.gradle, uh, compiles, 
up to date success our Gradle project has built successfully of course this isn't terribly surprising because there isn't actually any code in there yet um, all right so we have built an empty Gradle uh, project successfully just by saying we want to apply the plugin Java and giving the appropriate directory structure let's go into source main Java and let's make a directory now remembering that in Java we have package names and the folder structure kind of follows the package names let's put this into the package my proj and let's see the enter my proj and let us create a um, let's create um, greeter.java and so this can be you know it's in package my proj and uh, class greeter and let's just do the um, the kind of the typical well public static void main of array of strings arguments um, let's just go system dot out dot println of hello world all right let's escape out of that and let's save and exit um, so that's just edited it in a text editor now I'm gonna need to pop back up to where build.gradle is in order to run the gradle build now let's gradle build this and it should invoke the Java compiler upon my greeter.java And yes, that appears. Well, that says it works. Let's let's have a look in there. There is now a build directory. Build is the directory where Gradle puts all of its outputs. And if we go into the build uh, directory and we have a look, we can see there's classes, there's libs, there's temp. Well, let's go into the classes it's created for us. And there's main and there's the package my proj. And let's have a look and there is now greeter.class uh, let's see what happens um hang on i think i need to go up one level and go java uh my proj dot greeter hello world it works so gradle has compiled my code but i haven't actually put any dependencies in there yet and also it's going to by default be compiling it expecting it to be a java about 1.5 um, so I might get some errors if I was to use Java 8 features. Um, so let's go back up and there's Gradle proj, vi build.gradle. And let's do a couple of things. Let's say, uh, well, let's just do the dependencies and uh, we'll not worry yet about setting the source compatibility uh, to be uh, 1.5. Uh, we'll leave that. Uh, for the moment so dependencies and let's say that we have a dependency which is for the tests let's say all right I want to go and write some tests and so I need to pull in the JUnit test framework so instead of this being a compile phase dependency this is now a test compile phase dependency and uh, it's got the group uh, which is JUnit and it has got the name which is JUnit and it has got the version um, well the version that I want to use is 4.12 and uh, let's escape out of that save and quit and now let's go Gradle build and now we should see it uh, it's going to want to search for some dependencies as it happens of course though I have already got those dependencies um, if I was to have a look and I think Gradle uses Ivy if I remember uh, if I look in my dot Ivy 2 directory and if I have a look in my cache and I have a look at uh, all the different things that it's downloaded uh, well one of those uh, is quite likely to be JUnit and in JUnit, have I already got 4.12? Um, no, maybe it's not. Uh, oh, of course, sorry. More recent version of Gradle uh, now actually has a dot .gradle cache instead of sharing the Ivy one. And uh, let's have a look in there in 
jars. Ooh, gosh, gosh, gosh. I think it's Gradle 2.8 that I'm using. Um, no, maybe not. Okay, anyway. Uh, in your home directory, uh, there are places where it is going to cache the outputs uh, uh, that it has downloaded. And so in this particular case, it's not going to need to go back out to the internet again to go and get that one. Um, but now that I have a, um, I, I've got JUnit in there, I could, if I want, go into source test Java and let's make a directory. And it was my proj was the package name. And let's cd into my proj. And let us go and uh, create a test. And so let, let's um, call this, um, should we call this greeter test or test greeter? Um, I forget which way around uh, we do it. I think it's greeter test. And this is again in package my proj. And in this case, so it's class greeter test. And in here, we can start to define various different tests. So let's say we have public void um, test foo. And at the moment, this doesn't do anything. Well, how am I going to tell the system that I want to run my tests uh, what my test is, that there's a test here? Uh, well, the way JUnit does it is it doesn't scan absolutely everything, but it will look for classes that have the name test in them. So greeter test should get picked up. Uh, but I'm still going to need to say, um, by the way, I have some tests here um, that I would like you to run. And so I'm going to need to um, go and uh, first of all, I'm going to need to go and import. Um, well, I'm going to need to import an annotation to say that my public void test foo um, is actually a test. And so let's import org.junit.test. And now let's go down here and let's put an annotation on it that says this is a test. And in here, well, I need to actually write my test. I, I, what am I testing? What, what, what does this do? And for the moment, I'm just going to write a thing that says assert equals. And I would like the message to be weren't equal. And the value that I am expecting is true. And the value that I am actually going to give it is false. So this test should fail. False is not equal to true. This test should fail. Um, but I need to import the assert equals uh, method. So I need to import static org.junit.assert.assert equals. And now let's pop up to where build.gradle is and let's go gradle build and this time hopefully we will get a failed test aha here we go um oh no okay we got a different uh cannot resolve external dependency because no repositories are defined i have forgotten something else my goodness i am forgetting many things today right let's go into build.gradle and let's make sure we tell it where to get that library from. It turns out that it seems it's not needed to, um, it's not run the test compile phase because I didn't have any tests to run. Uh, there wasn't anything in source test Java to compile, so test compile never happened. So the dependency in test compile never got fetched. Well, I need to tell it about a repository. Let's tell it about the repository. And again, I'm just going to pop to my crib notes because otherwise I'm going to get this URL wrong. I just know I'm going to get the URL wrong. Right, this repository is going to be a Maven repository. And so that is the format of repository that uh, Gradle should be expecting. There are also Ivy repositories. And this one is defined by a URL. And uh, the URL here is HTTP slash slash hopper.une.edu.au port 8081 that's why I needed to go to my crib notes because that bit I'm not going to necessarily remember 
artifactory and libs hyphen release slash okay so now i have told gradle about a repository so now let's do gradle build gosh i was about to type build gradle instead uh gradle build and this time uh we get uh, so our build is not successful, but this time it's not successful for the right reason. This time our build is not successful because there were failing tests. Two tests completed, two failed. What went wrong? Execution failed for task test. There were failing tests. And we can see, see the report at this particular URL. So let's go and um, I'm I could just open the URL there, but let's actually copy and we'll just use the open command on here. And so here we can see that there is an HTML test summary that has been produced. Uh, Greeter test in uh, class should have exactly one public constructor. So in this particular case, it is complaining that I have um, I've actually not written my test quite correctly. So let's go vi source test uh, java um, greeter test. Oh, sorry, uh, my proj greeter test. And in here, um, and what have we got? We have got uh, test class should have exactly one public constructor. Um, test the class my proj greeter test is not public and of course i've been domestically blind and when i've written this i've just not said public class greeter test all right let's save that and let's run our gradle build and let's find out what my next silly mistake um as i try and type while talking and i'm concentrating on my talking not on my typing um goes on and so this time aha here we go um, the, the the test has failed and in this case my proj test foo failed it's spotted now this is the test in my test that has failed and if I go to my report I should see um, that um, here we go that is the test that has failed and if I click on it weren't equal that's the message I put in I was expecting uh, true but actually it was false and if I pop back into my file and I edit greeter test and I go and I change my um, value that I'm actually checking against and I say no that is true true equals true now my test should succeed my build should succeed gradle build let's make it compile my code it's going to it's not going to need to recompile my ordinary code it's going to need to recompile my tests and it's going to run them and this time build successful um, the tests all passed and we can see the different phases that it's done. It's done, you know, compile Java, process resources, classes, jar, assemble, compile, test Java, process test resources, test classes, test check, um, etc. Now, let us pop back across here and let us go to that file and let's hit refresh. 100% successful. So now it is saying it's got one test. It took a, a millisecond to run. Uh, package pro my proj one test no failure success rate 100 percent and so that is a very quick introduction um, to gradle and also how gradle uh, java projects uh, work quite neatly uh, with this testing framework called junit uh, which we will meet um, as we go along so at this stage I would like to do a couple of things. One of them is I would like to show you around a slightly bigger project. Um, so let's pop back to the slides first of all. Um, so I have shown you a trivial project made of one module. But if you're writing a game that's going to have a client and it's going to have a server and it's going to be sending data between the client and the server, uh, well, it might strike you that there's going to be an executable that you run on the client and there's going to be an executable you run on the server. So there's going to be at least two modules. In fact, there's going to be many more because there's going to be the modules that are shared by the client 
and the server are going to need to be separate modules so that we can say the client depends on them and the server depends on them. So we're going to need to create a modular build. Now I'm not going to do this from scratch, I'm going to show you one uh, from earlier. And I'm going to show you one from a project a couple of years ago. I've used um, this project uh, a few times as um, as the class project that the class would develop. Um, but so the first thing I need to show you is a file called settings.gradle. And this is if you have a multi-module build, you need to tell Gradle what directories your modules are in. And so settings.gradle is going to say, I want you to include model, cryo setup, little snoring, server, client, combat, etc. The subdirectories that are um, that are modules. So let's pop back out and let us go over here and class project 2015 so this is not the project from from this year but you'll see similarities in the code shall we say um, and we'll go ls minus lf so that it will mark up which ones are directories so you can see in this directory there is a build.gradle there is a gradle build definition file in this directory but it's not going to be the only one in the project because well you know if you look there none of those are source this top level project isn't a Java project. This top level uh, project is, if you like, the, the, the overarching project and the sub modules are Java projects. Uh, there is a settings.gradle that says which of these directories are um, sub projects to include. So include model and we can see there's a directory called model. Include cryo setup, there's a directory called cryo setup. Little snoring, there is a directory called little snoring. So these are the subdirectories that are Gradle projects. Now, if we have a look in the top level uh, build.gradle, uh, sorry, let's just cat uh, build.gradle, and uh, let's uh, clear the screen a little. Uh, we can see that we've said, well, all projects, so all of the sub projects and this top level project, we want to set the version number to be 0.1 snapshot. We're doing our development, uh, it's a snapshot. The sub project, not this top level one, the sub project apply the Java pr plugin. Those sub projects, they are Java projects because they're Java modules. And here we can see I've said the source compatibility, let's target Java 1.8. Um, there, there is this oddity that because in the dim and distant past, Java version 1.2 was called Java 2, um, it means that when we talk about source compatibility, if we want to target Java, 1, uh, Java 8, we say source compatibility is 1.8. Uh, and so that is the the features that we're expecting in the code and target compatibility. I would like you to produce Java class files that target the version 1.8 uh, virtual machine. Here we've said here are some repositories I would like you to teach about teach you about. And there is a Maven repository and there is our repository on Hopper. Uh, but we've also said, by the way, they're Maven local. If you've got stuff that is locally cached in your um, in your Maven repository on your disk, uh, .m2, um, well, there's that one as well. Uh, Maven Central, that's the one that I showed you. Uh, Search.maven.org was the interface to it. Maven Central is a famous uh, Maven repository out on the internet. And JCenter is also another famous repository out on the internet. Um, let's pop to a web browser and uh, where are we? Uh, let's JCenter. Let's just go search for it. There we go. jcenter at bintray.com. And oh, this is taking a little while to load. Um, but this is, if you like, a, a, a little bit of a competitor to Maven Central. But often you will find the same um, the same project publish um, publish their, their, their uh, Java artifacts to both. OK. So let's pop back over here. And so we've said dependencies. Well, over. All of our sub projects, remembering that we're still looking at the sub projects, all of our sub projects are going to use um, SLF for J, and all of our sub projects are going to use log for J, a logging library. Uh, so these, these, these are all log about logging. And they're all going to also be able to use Guava, uh, which is a library from Google that um, has lots of useful utility things in it for Java. 
and in this particular case they're also also going to use Jackson which is a library for parsing JSON and down here we've got some test compile dependencies and there you can see all our Java projects our sub projects they're all going to be using JUnit version 4.12 uh, we will meet Mokito shortly incidentally and uh, this is for doing some uh, testing on the UI um, so that there, there's some handy stuff for testing Java effects okay so that's what's in the top level build directory but if we ha have a look I, I mean there's a lot of directories here and if we have a look the model um, module was the module in which we defined our core classes, the module in which we defined some things that everything's going to need to know about. And so because everything needs to know stuff about it, it, it doesn't have any extra dependency over the common ones. So if we have a look in model, we won't find a build.gradle. We'll find a build, that's where Gradle is putting its output, but we won't find a build.gradle specifying any extra build information. Um, but if we go and have a look in the server, directory well the server module now does have an extra build.gradle uh, saying some more stuff about how to build the server module and if we go into server and if we uh, have a look at build.gradle then we can see well we've got some extra dependencies some of these dependencies are on different modules in our multi-module build. So model, I said, you know, the client and the server need to know about it. Well, here is the thing saying the server depends upon the model module. Uh, but the server also depended on a few other modules as well. And here we have some other libraries that were being pulled in just for the server. The server, uh, in this particular case, used Akka, which is an actor framework for um, how to handle parallelization of requests. So there were some extra dependencies. Um, but if you can imagine, the server is also something we want to run. We want to be able to start a server. And so we have a task down here at the bottom to teach Gradle, here is how you run the server. So I would like to define a task and it is called run server. And what it depends on is having compiled all of the classes. And this task is of type Java exec, executing some Java code. And the Java code I want you to run, um, well, that is the class that has public void main for the server in it. And in that case, that was called in the package vanilla.server and it was called main. And the class path that I would like you to use for this execution is the class path that you have worked out from the dependencies uh, of the project. So all of these things are going to end up on that source set main runtime class path. And so please swap that out for me. And so in doing so, I now have um, an extra uh, build target if you like I can go Gradle run server and it will go and try and compile all my the, the necessary modules it'll pull down any other libraries that are needed and it will try and run my server um, something I should note is that task won't complete until run server has finished so all the time that Gradle run server is running because of the way I set that up uh, it would sit at 95% and people go oh is that, that that doesn't seem like it's finished uh, but then if you exited the server if you control seed it suddenly oh actually gradles now thinks it's finished because okay the, the run the server the running of the server has completed is the completion of the task um okay so let's pop back to the slides and summarize that bit then so we've got settings.gradle and this defines the sub projects that we're going to include in a multi in a multi-module build uh we have a top level build.gradle that says its sub project in its sub projects i want you to do this stuff and so i want you to uh, apply the java plugin i want you to set the source compatibility for the java compiler to say well in that case i put 1.6 actually we'd like 1.8 now so let's change that um, here's some repositories that you can fetch uh, libraries from for all of these sub projects and we've told it about artifactory and then in some of the sub projects, there may be uh, extra build.gradles giving more information about that sub project. And so in the server, we needed to say, well, this module depends upon these other modules. And so we have a compile time dependencies on these projects. And uh, 
It also had a compile time dependency on some extra libraries that it needed to fetch from the internet. And we also defined an extra task. We said, OK, we have another task that I want to teach you about, and it is called run server, and it depends upon the classes, and it's a Java executing task, and this is the class that you're going to run, and please use the class path that you've worked out as being the runtime class path based on the dependencies that you've seen. And then, if we want to build our multi-module build our more complex projects, well at the top level we can say Gradle build. And actually at the top level we can also say Gradle run server because it will look through the submodules to find one that's got a run server task and it will run it. Um, something I should let you know though is that often Gradle will create a lock in a directory when it is working in that directory and so if you've um, if your project is empty and you pop into uh, one terminal and run say Gradle run client and another one and say Gradle run server you can end up in a in a little bit of a deadlock situation where if the wrong one gets there first um, then uh, it can be if you like wanting to wanting to do its build in there but the other one has got the lock and hasn't finished yet so you know you've gone to run the server uh, run the server and it's doing stuff but it, it, it's not finished yet and the other Gradle task gets locked out. Um, there are some unusual situations in which you can get a little bit of a deadlock uh, but then you just kind of quit one of them and the other one finishes and then you run it and, 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 and then it works. Uh, but so invoking a target just ends up being Gradle build, Gradle run server and so for instance that gives us a command that we can give to Jenkins, who is going to automatically build and test your code. We can say, what I want you to do is Gradle test. And that Gradle test involves running all the tests in all of the submodules, which means you're going to get, need to get all of the dependencies, you're going to need to compile all their code, you're going to need to compile all their test code, and you're going to need to run in the tests, and you're going to fail the build if any of those tests fail. Those of you who are taking um, or have taken our Scala unit or our advanced web programming unit, um, you might have come across the Scala build tool. And so, as I mentioned before, these uh, when I was showing you the Maven repository, um, the Scala build tool uh, can also understand uh, Maven repositories. Uh, it works very similarly to Gradle, but it has another little handy idea in it that I thought I would mention to you. The Scala compiler is notoriously slow. It does a lot of stuff. It does a lot of um, type inference, which is very useful for programmers, um, but it takes it a while. And that can mean that you don't actually want to um, you don't want the compiler to exit and forget everything it's done. You want the compiler sometimes to sit there watching for changes, a bit like how make you only wanted it to make and run the um, the tasks that it really needed to do. In this case, you'd like the Scala compiler to remain there um, remembering what it's seen in the other files, so it remembers all of the different types it's worked out and doesn't have to redo its working every time. And so... Um, it has some commands that will watch for changes to files and will just pass things incrementally to the compiler to save you a little bit of time. And so if you go to if you run SPT and you go to the SPT prompt and you just say compile is going to compile. But if you say tilde space compile, it will do the compile, but then sit there watching for changes that it can pass incrementally in to make your subsequent compiles whenever you've edited some code and saved something really quick. Um, but otherwise, in practice, it's very, very similar to Gradle. 